And and you were just remarking to me that that you were you were all verklempt and everything, and energy level was low. And I wanted to pick you up a little bit because I, you know, I'm I'm sitting here. It's it's only November thirtieth, and it's snowing in Louisville, Kentucky. That's that's ridiculous. How much snow? Yeah. Well, it's flurrying. I don't know if it'll stick yet, but that's ridiculous. It's only November 30th. Yeah, I don't live in New Jersey where you people are used to getting three feet of freaking snow and just have entrances to your house off the second story so that you can just walk out on top of these massive snow drifts. You get up there in the fucking polo pony fields. Is that a question? I, I don't know. No, I'm making a statement. It, it's a big deal to me when it snows on November 30th because I'm not there where where there are immense snowfalls and, and you people just ig- live in igloos. Well, I'm waiting for snow this year because, you know, we moved here to the new last manor almost three years ago. And at that point, I decided I'm never shoveling snow ever again. I've always shoveled snow. I took a lot of pride in my show snoveling. <laughs> what, my, what did I just say? My snow shoveling. Excuse your me. Your show snoveling. My show snoveling. But you can take pride in that too, because whenever when you can snovel, you ought to show it off. I took a lot of pride in my snow shoveling. I would get the entire path. I would get the entire driveway. Are you kidding me? Now we have a whole lot more driveway. And I said, this just isn't going to work. I'm never shoveling again. So of course, that first year I shoveled more than I had in years. Last year. Not much snow, but it's still a few times, and I'm getting older. I feel it in my back. So I said, this is the year I am finally buying a snowblower, and I just bought it. It should be here any day now. It'll be arriving in the mail. I got an electric snowblower, so I don't have to mess with the gas. A snowblower? A snow. Well, you guys blower, must yeah. get pussy snow up there. We get the hard shit. You have to take a fucking spade shovel to it. None of this plastic shit. You need what to get the, the heavy stuff. We get the heavy big, snow. Heavy sh- huh? You lived in the Northeast. You know we got heavy snow. Well, it was heavy where I was. It was too heavy where I was. <laughs> but what, what do you mean? Blow, where are you going to blow the snow? <laughs> to the side. To the, <laughs> to the side with you, I say. You really went out and Between shoveled. 14 inches and two feet to the side, apparently. When you, when you, when your previous shoveling days before you became a blower, uh, you would do walkways and the driveway and the whole night. Are you out of your mind? You could have a heart attack like that. Do you know how much snow, snow, you know how much show that I've snubbled? How, how much show have you snubbled? Uh, do you know how much snow that I have shoveled in the last at least 10 years, zip, zilch, zero, goose egg, nada, bupkis. And the last time I remember shove a snoveling show, it was more than 10 years ago. Here in Louisville, at one, one winter time, we had a, a 20-something inches on the ground at one time. And I had to, to be able to open a couple of doors. I had to get a shovel and just rake some shit to the side. But otherwise, fuck, you know how I get out if it snows? If I have to go out somewhere, I open a garage door, I fucking start Black Beauty up, I put it in fucking four-wheel drive, and I gun it backwards. And God damn it, if there's a foot of snow out there, I'm going through it. And once I get out there on a flat part, then I crank it into drive, and then I eyeball where my I think my driveway is, gauging it based on the trees where they're growing and now my new gate helps keep me right down at that part and i just drive that way there's no f- and and i don't want anyone to come up my driveway it's 200 feet uphill so if you don't have four wheel drive and a big heavy fucking suv or something you ain't coming up anyway if it's a big snowfall so i can get in and out And it's just an extra level of security, another physical barrier between me and the outside world. But I ain't shoveling any of that shit. You can have a stroke. I don't disagree with you. The way Suzanne got me a few years ago was explaining to me that the mailman could get hurt. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. Well, fuck him. Let him fend for himself. (laughs) Well, 
I'm not worried about him. I'm not worried about him fending for himself. It's his attorney that made. Tell him to leave the goddamn mail in the box down at the road. That's what it's for. No, see, I never have had that, and I don't think I could ever deal with that. A mailbox far away from the house. What? I've never had a mailbox like on the street, nowhere near the house. Where are you going to put it? In the mailbox next to the house, like next to the actual door. Well, goddamn. Not only then would that require a lot of extra gas usage of, on the part what? of the United States Postal Service to drive up and down people's driveways over and over and over again. I'm not saying they have to do that for everybody. I'm saying I prefer this. I prefer and not having a mailbox so over special the He's got to turn in your driveway, pull all the way to your fucking house, stick something right hey. in your door. You know, hey, but hey, when listen. He had, now our mailman here is is very... For actually, she's a male lady now, a very nice male lady. But if we have packages that will not fit in the mailbox, she'll tootle on up the driveway and leave them by the garage or or on the porch or whatever the case may be. But for normal circumstances, that's just that's asking these poor mail carriers to go out of their way over and over again just because you want door to door service. Hey, listen, this mailman is the same mailman that we gave a lawnmower to. This is the same mailman who asked if he can go in the woods by my house and cut some trees. How did that transaction just come up? We were going to get rid of the lawnmower because I have a wonderful gardener. I'm never, ever mowing a lawn ever, ever. And we're going to get rid of it. And it still works. I just didn't want it. I didn't need it in the shed. So I offered it to the mailman. And he was very, very happy to take it. So you have this relationship with your mailman where, hey, you want a lawnmower? Yeah. Oh, all right. I don't think there's anything well, wrong with giving gifts to the mailman. He wants a lawnmower. If anyone deserves a gift, it's the mailman. The oh, wonderful see, now people that work for the U.S. Face. Postal You've, Service. Yeah, they do deserve a gift for, for crawling up your driveway through rain and sleet and snow and dark of night to put your shit right next to the door instead of you walking your lazy rich ass down to the road to get it. You mean like giving them a lawnmower? They deserve a gift like that to do that? <laughs> well, I, so I we're even. We're good. What exactly they might deserve. This is the I'd same. Like this is the same guy. People. This is the I'd same like guy. You give everybody what you deserve, what they deserve. This is the same guy. When we moved in here, and I was asking him because I had noticed in the backyard we always have various different animals. It's like a Disney cartoon back there. All sorts of deers and foxes and all sorts of shit. It's deer is the plural of of deer. Well, all sorts of deer, my dear. And I <laughs> said to him, I said, "Hey, do you think there's anything to worry about with?" The fox. I, I've never had foxes on my property. Or do you call it just fox? I've never had fox on my property before. <laughs> do I have anything to worry about? I have a baby. I have a small dog. And he said, no, I wouldn't worry about them. But I can't even tell you how many people in this neighborhood have Lyme disease. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> how do you do? <laughs> hey. Oh, uh, that, that, so that's what he said. Also, he goes. I wouldn't worry about the fox, but you got to watch out for the coyotes. And I said, <laughs> what? Not even coyotes, coyotes. coyotes. This guy knows what he's saying. Well, that's old, that's old gravy boat Bill. He used to work at the Wild West show <laughs> doing the shoot 'em ups. <laughs> have you had a, a, a coyote problem? I can't say I have, but then again, whenever I see a big fox, I'm like, is that a coyote or is that a fox? But I always go with, I think it's a fox. But there are other people, because we see them in the area, they'll post stuff on the Ring app. Like, a coyote got, you know, is on the loose. Watch out. Watch your small dogs. Well, if it was a, you'd be able to tell a coyote from a fox, because the the coyote always is accompanied by a large crate from Acme Incorporated. <laughs> so you'd be able to tell, or, or if he had any, you know, box traps or ropes and pulleys. Uh, metal bird seed and large magnets, things of that nature. Then that's the way you differentiate the fox from the, the 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 regular uh, or the coyotes from the regular foxes. I thought of you. Speaking of animals, I thought of you this weekend. What the wait? Um, what um, kind of goddamn segue is being? <laughs> listen, of a filthy, dirty, wild, feral beast. Well, actually, I was thinking yes. of you. Yeah, well, that's exactly it. This weekend on CBS Sunday Morning, a fine program I watch each and every Sunday morning when I can, they did a feature about raccoons. And I thought of you. What the? 
from when that raccoon got in your house well, and started yes, destroying I everything. I have, I have one interaction, albeit a slightly spectacular one, more of a stir than most raccoon interactions cause, but I have one interaction with a raccoon, and forevermore you link me in your mind whenever you see a raccoon. It turns out they're not actually washing their food. They have special whatever the hell in their hands so they can put them in the water and feel in the dirt and feel the food that they feed themselves. But a lot of people have the false, the misconception, I should say, that they are actually washing their food. They're not. They're dirty animals. Well, I'm, I'm glad you straightened that out. I could tell you that because I, I found actual goddamn raccoon shit from that raccoon on one of the cardboard moving boxes that I just pulled out of my office closet here about three weeks ago when I was moving some stuff around. He shit on my end table, shit on my <laughs> curtains. When the cops hit, you know, hit to hit him with the flashlights, I don't, I mean, hit him with the light beam, not the actual. <laughs> get him, get the flashlight, hit him. <laughs> hit the cops. <laughs> when they turned the lights upon him, it's it frightened him in such a manner that he leaped from the the, the table to the curtains to the boxes that and, and running around shitting and shitting along his way along his route. And I thought I'd gotten all of it, but that was 2005, and I just found one of his shitty boxes. Which wrestler had a pet raccoon he would bring to the ring? I don't remember. Who oh God! Uh, well, uh, was Whiskers. There was Whiskers Savage, but did because there were so many. They had pigs, I know. Yeah. Well, the hillbilly guys. At various points, I've seen pictures. Um, whether you know, sometimes they did the the possum. Uh, there's pictures with possums. Sometimes it was you know pigs. A lot of times, the small pig, not the giant six hundred pound pig. But along that, uh, uh, Whiskers Savage did something of that nature, maybe even more than one animal in his days in, in Texas. Did he not? I was going to say Farmer Marlin, but I don't think that would be right. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, it wasn't Farmer Burns. No, it certainly was not that Farmer much. Burns. Yes. No. He, he, was, he was a serious farmer. <laughs> he, was, he wasn't any farmer to jack around with, was Farmer Burns. <laughs> 